afternoon. Uh, looking forward to the Lord has for us tonight. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, uh, we thank you for the day. We thank you for all that occurred today. We thank you for the service this morning. Lord, I ask that you would help us tonight, that your name might be magnified and you might be pleased and your spirit might move. We sure do need you in your son's name. Amen. Thank you. you may be seated. All right. Number 213. We'll see it on the first, fifth, and sixth. The first Noel the angels did say was to certain poor shepherds in fields as they lay in fields where they lay keeping their sheep on a And if they have not given you a visitor card yet, if you're a visitor here in the service, um, they would love to do so. And so if you're a visitor, first time or the first time in a long time, um, they would love to give you one. Just raise your hand. We'll not embarrass you or do our best not to embarrass you. Do we have any visitors uh, this evening? No? Oh, very good. Well, we're, we're glad you're here. I'm excited to see what the Lord's going to do tonight. It was a wonderful service this morning, wasn't it? Wonderful service. And uh, so praise the Lord for that. All right, number 201, sing the first verse, and after that we'll have a handshaking time. And if the choir could make their way to their seats, we're going to sing a song. Go ahead and stand with me, please. <clears throat> all right. Oh, come, all ye faithful, joyful and triumphant. Oh, come ye, oh, come ye to Bethlehem. Come and behold him, born the king of angels. Oh, come, let us adore. Shake hands. 
on the second. Sing, choirs of angels, sing in exaltation. Oh, sing, all ye citizens of heaven above. Glory to God, all glory in the highest. Oh, come, let us adore Him. Oh, come, let us adore Him. Oh, come, let us adore Him, Christ the Lord. On the last, yea, Lord, we greet Thee, born this happy morning, Jesus, to Thee be all glory.
Praise the Lord for that. And because of his birth, we can have his crucifixion. Because of the birth of crucifixion, we have the resurrection. Because of the birth of crucifixion and resurrection, we have salvation. So we get to go to heaven someday. Praise the Lord for that. All right, youth choir, your turn. Come on up, youth choir. Passing the torch. Going from the seasoned to the pre-seasoned. The young people now get ready to sing for us. That would be great. Great to see everybody here this evening. teenage boy in prison before he's even grown the illness of a loved one a widow no one calls but there is one solution one answer for it all church that needs revival, a broken man and wife. But in the name of Jesus, the chains of bondage fall. Prayers are heard and answered when God's children call.
full name. Praise the Lord. All right, let's take our Bible and turn to Luke chapter 2 again and uh, take care of matter of business. Patty McNally came to me after church today and wanted to point out to me that I said I love anything that kills mice and rats this morning. She said, so that means I must love cats. So I did some research today and found out I like snakes even more because snakes eat cats also. So I'm all about the snakes now, amen. <laughs> I'm sorry, Fatty, I couldn't resist. All right, Luke chapter 2. Let's stand up real quickly. While you're standing up, tell me something you love about Christmas. Let's take a few tests. What a great crowd we have here tonight. And praise the Lord for that. We're going to hear Leto sing again. Miss Jennifer on the piano. Anybody, what do you love about Christmas? Brother John. The spirit of thinking of others. The spirit of thinking of others. Mmm. Mm, that's a little prelude to our new theme, which is the best ever. Missy. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's fun when you're a parent open watching. I, it's, I bet it's even more fun as a grandparent. It's right here. Yes, sir. Family. I knew that was coming. Spending time with family. Yes, Mindy. Uh, giving gifts. Amen. Receiving is fun, too, but giving is, is even better. Yeah. Yes, sir. Seeing old friends and family. You got a lot of old friends? Okay, I got you. Yeah, I knew. I was going to say, you're a little too young to have old friends, but I know what you mean. Just kidding. Yes, sir, Brother Don. Yeah, bringing Christ into the holiday. That's what Christmas is all about. Yes, Paulette? Food. This is that time of the year from Thanksgiving to Christmas where it just becomes an overload of food. Yes, Brittany? Celebrating Jesus' birth. That's good. Yes, Jared? Traditions. There are a lot of great holiday traditions. and We have nationwide traditions, but we also have family. Different families do different things. Yes, Mrs. Miller? Yes. Amen. Amen. That's good. That's good. There's a lot of stress. My wife's like, man, she worked two days for the Thanksgiving meal, and in 30 minutes it was over. Yeah. And uh, But you're right. No stress in heaven. That'll be great. Thank you, Ms. Miller. Yeah, I see a lot of hands back there. Young ladies, yes. Is that Jack? Yeah, I'll get to you in a second, Jack. Ladies first. Yes, young ladies. Go ahead. Everything. Well, I guess on that, we can go and read the scripture. I mean, she's got it now. Yes, sir, Jack. Chicken. We were discussing on the bus route this morning on our way out how we like our steaks prepared. And, and I was teasing Neil because he was telling me he likes his, like, medium rare, right? Medium well. Yeah, we were talking about steaks. I said, how do you like your chicken? I was trying to be kind of smart, you know, and he's like, fried. Oh, yeah, that's a good answer right there. <laughs> That was a good answer, Neil. I like that. Who else? I saw a few. Yes, ma'am. Oh, Christmas lights. Yes, me and Grant Claire put them up the other night at our house, so we won't win the contest, but they look pretty good. Yes, ma'am. How many of you already got your tree up? Yeah, so did we. Yeah, how many are going to? That's on your list of things to do this week. A few of you. All right. Looks like a lot of you have it up. Good. All right. Yes, Brother Thad. Amen. Amen, Brother Thad. That's good. I love the family here we have here. Yes, Brother George. <laughs> as long as you cheerfully give, you can cheerfully receive the gospel of George. The Lord love of the cheerful receiver, he said. That's good. All right, let's look at Luke chapter 2. Great testimonies there. I love to hear from the pew. Y'all have always have neat things to say. Paulette will break out Christmas jokes in full force starting Wednesday. And I know the church can't wait. Every year it's a tradition to get Christmas jokes going. Brother Sampson's already looking. He's so excited about my Christmas jokes. All right, let's look at two, Luke 2, verses 1 and 12, 11 and 12. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. I hear little kids quoting it. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. Father, we love you. Thank you for this truth tonight. Thank you for the testimonies you've heard. We truly are blessed Lord, it bothers me that so many people say 2020 has been a bad year. Lord, it's really been an amazing year. And 
in spite of all the things that have happened, you've been good, you've controlled, you know what's going on, you've been good to us, you've taken care of us, and we're grateful for that. May this Christmas season be extra special as we finish 2020 strong and head into a new year. Lord, we're excited about what you got planned for us until you come. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. You may be seated. And now, Leto Maeto will come sing. In the darkness we were waiting, without hope, without light, till from heaven you came running, there was mercy in your eyes. To fulfill the law and prophets, to a virgin came the word, from a throne of endless glory, to a cradle in the dirt. to reveal the kingdom coming and to reconcile the lost to redeem the whole creation you did not despise the cross for even in your suffering you saw to the other side knowing this was our salvation jesus for our sake you died Praise the Father, praise the Son, praise the Spirit, three in one, God of glory, majesty, praise forever to the King of kings. And the morning that you rose, all of heaven held its breath, till that stone was moved for good, for the Lamb had conquered death. And the dead rose from their tombs, and the angels stood in awe, for the souls of all who'd come to the Father are restored. And the church of Christ was born, then the Spirit lit the flame. Now this gospel truth of old shall not kneel, it shall not faint. By his blood and in his name, in his freedom I am free. For the love of Jesus Christ, who has resurrected me. Praise the Father, praise the Son, praise the Spirit, three in one. God of glory, majesty, praise forever to the King of kings. Oh, praise forever to the King of kings. Amen. So the Luke chapter 2 this evening, Luke chapter 2. It wasn't a long a while back. I was talking to another pastor who'd been in the same church for a long time, and it's been a while. And he asked me this question. He said, uh, "You ever find it hard sometimes to preach the same crowd for as long as we have? You know, twenty plus years." And you know, I was encouraged many years ago by what an old pastor said. Remember, there's nothing new under the sun. And I think sometimes there's a little bit of pressure to try to find that new truth that'll just impress people and and make people think much of the preacher and less of Christ, which is never the intent of preaching. It should always be about Christ. And we were discussing that just in a friendly conversation about that. And I said, yeah, there's times you just wonder if, you know, the same familiar voice gets kind of old after a while. It's the same thing that happens all the time. And, and then I, I decided to take that challenge and look into my own personal life as I was walking with God, making sure that I personally don't get bored of His voice. And a while back, God directed me to start looking for the little words in the Bible. The, the little words. You know, there's a lot of little words that make a huge difference. And I think about Ephesians chapter 2 where God reminds us that, that we were sinners and 
children of disobedience and darkness. And then that one beautiful, short, three-letter, one-syllable word shows up. But God, who is rich in his mercy, wherewith he loves us. But, that word but made such a huge difference in that passage. And, and the same with Romans 5. But God commendeth his love toward us. And sometimes it's the little words that make a big difference. Which is why I asked for these testimonies before Christmas, or for this Christmas, say before the service tonight. Talking about the little things of Christmas. You know, I, a lot of people are expecting these big gifts. I always laugh when I see some of these commercials this time of the year. You know, GMC and Ford and, you know, we know how those vehicles are. Somebody say amen right there. But anyway, uh, GMC has this one commercial where the husband gives he and his wife a brand new truck for Christmas. And I always laugh at that commercial because I thought, I don't know very many people that can do that, right? And, and I, I was reading an article last year about what do the rich get each other for Christmas? And, you know, they buy each other yachts and and airplanes sometimes. And I was looking at that list and I thought, wow. And I think sometimes America, we get so enamored by the big things, right? We, we want everything big in America. It's like that one preacher told me one time that a Russian had come to America for the first time and, and he asked the Russian what he thought of America. And he said, wow, everything in America is big. Buildings are big. Cars, vehicles are big. And people, big. <laughs> and uh, there's a lot of truth to that. I mean, Everything's big and better in America, right? And I think sometimes as we read the Bible, we, this, and, this, that, and that's okay, by the way. I'm not against that. I, I love that. I mean, people oftentimes say as they drive down this road, what a beautiful, big building. People say that, and I praise the Lord for that testimony. But in the midst of all the bigness, don't forget the little things. And this morning we talked about the big event of Christmas and how faith and logic came together on Christmas. How God has no problem with Christians using his creation and factual things to prove the faith we're supposed to have. But when I thought about that, it really changed my outlook on Christianity because I feel like we almost put fact on the opposing side of faith when we're actually we can use them together sometimes. And tonight, though, I looked at this passage and two times this word shows up and it's a simple word. It's called and the word is this, this, this. If you look here at the word this here in this passage, you'll see it's defined simply as this, to indicate. You know, we have this word this, that, these, those. And, and the way I ask this question or make this statement will de decide your response. I right, watch this real quickly. Have you ever had one of those days? Now, when I ask it that way, you immediately you think he must be talking about a rough day. Man. Don't you love these kind of days? All of a sudden, I change my tone to emphasize your response. It'll be different. Have you ever had those days? And deaf people can read my facial expressions. Or do you have these kind of days, right? We often hear this craze, phrase, do you like this or that? Which word do you like better? Well, it depends on what this is and that is. Because if you ask me if I like this or that, and this is tea and that is coffee, my answer is this. If you like, if you say, hey, preacher, do you like this or that better? And this is a cat and that's a snake, then I'm going to say that. <laughs> Sorry, Patty, I'm done. No, I'm done. Truce, truce, peace, peace. All right. So you have this, that, these, those. And all of that is determined by our emphasis on it, our facial expressions, our voice inflection, all those things will determine your response to it. I saw a funny insurance commercial during the football game yesterday. These insurance companies are getting really desperate. I mean, I mean, nothing beats Geico. I mean, can we get an amen? Geico's got some of the best. I mean, who loves that little lizard, right? I know he's not a lizard. Don't try to correct me, but I call him a lizard because I think he looks like a lizard. But, but the fact is they have this new commercial now where this kid opens up a present and the little boy, and he's excited because he got an insurance package in a box. And his brother's all sad because he opened up a bicycle. What a funny commercial, right? He's sad. He's disappointed again because he got this and he got that. And kids, as we approach Christmas and kids, nothing. 45 year old man. I told you a few weeks ago, I'm looking forward to getting a lot of nice Christmas presents for my kids this year. They make money. Amen. I mean, they got some money. And so I expect a good Christmas, right? Babe? We expect a good Christmas, maybe like an all expense paid trip to somewhere for my all four of our kids. As much as we've taken them with us. Anyway, just a little hint there. So, but, but the point is this, that, the power of that word. But in, the, in this passage, you see the significance of that word of this, that little word, four letters, one syllable, that makes all the big difference. 
Number one, this day. This, this day. Boy, I love that. If you look at Luke chapter 2 again in verse number 11, it says, For unto you is born. What are the next two words? Help me now. This day. You see, this day was going to take care of a whole lot of those days. You see, this particular day, this particular day was a real day. In fact, this day is a real day. This day is a day that gave us all hope. This day was a significant day in all of our eternities. This day was the day where Jesus Christ was born to fulfill an Old Testament promise and to become God in the flesh as he was birthed, knowing that it was going to save all of our souls if we let him. Amen. This day really happened. All of us should have some this days in our life. This day I got married was a special day. This day I got saved was an incredible day. This day my four kids are born. And you know, this, the, the this days of life will help us a lot with those days of life. Because not every day is always a this day. And sometimes the that days are better than the this days. But in this passage, God uses a little word. It's the little things again that bring so much emphasis and significance to what God is teaching us here. And in this passage, he says, for unto you is born this day. Praise the Lord for that. Well, what a blessing it is to meditate on that and think about that. How uh, just like we look back on history, we get close to December 7th. I, I never want to forget Pearl Harbor. It happened years before I was born. And, you know, I noticed the further removed we get from 9-11, people don't emphasize that tragedy as much. And because many of these children weren't even born then. I was a lot younger when 9-11 happened. I mean, and, and we're so far away from, from Pearl Harbor that it's a forgotten thing. Sometimes it becomes just a little blip. But there's days in our lives, whether they're sad days or, or tragic days or life-changing days or, or phenomenal days that we should never forget. And this day is one of them, if not the most important one of all, because when Jesus was born, everything changed. You understand? Everything changed. The dynamic of sin changed because God was completely confident that in 30 years that this baby was going to face temptation from Satan and win. And that this baby was going to grow up and face sin, death, hell and the devil and defeat all of them. And he was going to endure the cross and he would resurrect from the dead. And so here is 2020 Christmas approaches. We can always be thankful. For this day. Boy, thank God for that little word. Number two, I love this. There's that word this again. This sign. This sign. Look at verse number 12. And this, there's that word again. This, not that, this shall be a what? Sign unto you. This morning the challenge was to choose a sign. So let's just have a little fun tonight. What are some of your favorite signs in the Bible? And we'll get to this one in a second, so don't mention the birth of Jesus. What are your favorite signs? Yes, sir. The first chapter of Genesis. Creation. That's a great one. What else? Brother Street. The Star of Bethlehem. That's a great sign. I love to preach out of Matthew chapter 2. Great chapter. Yes, sir. What else? Kenny. The cross. Amen. That sign right there alone. What else? The empty tomb. What else? What about other signs that the Jews look for? Like we talked about this morning, Brother Stone. The great white throne. We're going to see that someday face to face. Amen. Yes. Miss Jennifer, the rainbow. Is that what you signed in the rainbow? Good job. You're signing that. By the way, can I just say this? The, the Bible gave us the rainbow. And I don't care what society says the rainbow means. To me, it still is a promise from God. Help me now. It is a promise from God to never flood the earth. I don't care what perverted groups hijack that symbol. Thank God for this, the sign of a rainbow. And to this day, we can still see a rainbow and know what God is telling us by the sign of a rainbow. It's in the Bible. That's a sign. Beautiful choice there. Good job on the sign language, too. Yes, Jack. The what? The crown of thorns. Whew, that's a powerful sign. Yes, what else? Anybody else? Yes, Bendy. The dove. That's a good one. The dove, is in, it, was in the, it was in the ark in Genesis chapter 6, 7, 8 in there. And also when Jesus was baptized, the excellent symbol of the Holy Spirit. What else? A couple more. 
Yes, Brother George. The promise of the Spirit. Yes, ma'am. I'm sorry? The olive branch. See, we have all these things in the Bible, Old Testament and New Testament, that, that, that direct us to certain messages and, and certain points to be made by God. But right here, this sign, this sign is phenomenal. And I, I think maybe we as Gentile Christians don't appreciate as much as the, the Jewish Christian would. And how many of you have ever met a, a Jew that's been saved? I think some of you have met some. I've met several. I've actually preached with several Jewish men that have been saved by the grace of God. And and they have a totally different outlook on the Bible than we do sometimes as, as Gentile Christians. Because they understand the significance of Old Testament law and, and Old Testament signs and Old Testament faith and all that. How it's a little bit different. But, but to think about the power of a sign. And when the angels were telling these lowly shepherds this incredible proclamation, they were saying, hey, wait, watch this now. This, this day, there's this sign. And you're going to find it if you go to Bethlehem right now. What a testimony. This sign. Number three, and I'm done with this one. Well, I love this one. This babe. This babe. Now, it doesn't say this in that passage about the babe, but you'll see this right here. Let's start in verse number 11 again and read it slowly. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. Ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. Now, as I, as I was studying that passage here, the word find jumped out of the page. I mean, again, another small word. You shall find it. Maybe many of you have been in church a long time. Those are popular Christmas message that gets been preached by many preachers through the years. Wise men still seek Jesus. Probably you've heard that theme or that title or that quote. How at Christmas time when the wise men in Matthew chapter 2 were sent out. And of course, they come. They come to an older Jesus at that time, not baby Jesus, as the shepherds. The shepherds got to see him first before those wise men did, the Magi, right? But as you study this passage here, the word find means to come upon. To come upon. Now that's interesting because we think the word find means in order for you to find something, it means you have to go looking for it. But all man has to do sometimes to get God's attention is one simple thing. Just have a little desire. Little desire. Little desire. Look at Luke chapter 2 real quick with me. We're just going to be wrapping it up. Look at verse number 17. I'm sorry, let's go back. Let's back up. Let's look at verse number 12. Again, and this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with an angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, peace on earth, or I'm sorry, and on earth, peace and goodwill toward men. And it came to pass, as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, Let us now go even unto Bethlehem and see this, there's that word this, this thing which has come to pass and which the Lord hath made known unto us. So there was a desire to see this sign. But watch this now. Once mankind shows any inclination of a desire, God will make sure that his plan comes upon you. So these guys actually stumbled upon it after the proclamation because they showed a little desire. But, but it wasn't a GPS like we have. It was the desire of man to see something miraculous from God. And this day and this sign brought them to this babe that changed their eternity. You see, salvation has been so much of God. When I think about the day I got saved and the days leading to it, I remember the feeling of an emptiness in my heart. I remember knowing that sprinkling I was told was good for me, didn't do anything for me spiritually. And the three baptisms growing up, all those things, there was an emptiness. And I remember praying as a 16-year-old boy. And by the way, this is what I'm about to tell you now is a real sinner's prayer. As a sinner, as a lost teenage boy, a football success was climbing. I was looked to heaven one night and said, God, there's got to be more to life than this. I remember uttering those words at the, in the second story in my bedroom at 1065 Pope Road, Danville, Kentucky, 40422. I still remember that like it was yesterday. And two years later, I found him. But by definition, the word find in this verse means to come upon you see, God saw the desire of a 16-year-old boy and said, I'm going to make sure that he is found. And that's the love of our Savior today. Because of this day, because of this time, because of this babe, we have this salvation tonight. And I thank God for that. It's the little words that make a difference. 
So as we spend the next, uh, what is it, 27 days prepping for Christmas Day, and how many of you got some good Black Friday deals? Leto brought me a lot of crazy, bought me a lot of crazy socks that I get to wear for the next few services. Thank you, Leto. And uh, Christmas socks. And, and, I, and I think about all the plans we have and presents and family plans. I mean, we're supposed to go to Pennsylvania and how many plan to travel for Christmas? And it's going to be interesting. There are a lot of states are already renouncing stipulations and rules. And it's going, to be, it's going to be an interesting year. In the midst of all those things, church, maybe this Christmas story reminds us tonight. Do not forget the little things, the little words, the little words of the Bible, little I love you's, the little pats on the back, little cards, little texts, little eye to eye contact where you just tell somebody I'm praying for you and I love you because it is the little things when they are appreciated that make the big things appreciated even more. This day, this sign and this babe. Thank you, Jesus. Head your bad eyes are closed. So now it's time. Hello, Pastor Randy Dingman here of Bible Baptist Church in Jefferson City, Missouri. Let me take a moment and express to you what our main vision and purpose is of this ministry. You see, much of this world today has a question. It's a question that was asked in John chapter 3 by one person. It's a question that is asked by the masses, but when you really think about it, it's really a question we all have to come to grips with, face to face with, one on one in our lives, sometime in our life. The question is this, where will I spend eternity? And that question was asked by a religious leader by the name of Nicodemus in John chapter 3. He approached Jesus Christ in the middle of the night and had a question about spiritual matters. Well, good thing for Nicodemus, he came to the right person at the right time because Jesus Christ is the answer in spiritual matters. You see, many of us have questions about that, and man has tried in many of its efforts to answer that question with their own ideas and philosophies. We've tried to come up with ideas on how to get us to heaven, how to confirm our way to heaven. But the fact is we got to find out what God says about eternal things. And that's why asking Jesus Christ that question is so vital. Because when you ask Jesus a question, you get the answer. And as the question was asked, Jesus answered simply this, you must be born again. In John chapter 3, that's what he said to Nicodemus. And that's the same thing he says to you and to me, even today. You see, God is God of this universe, but he's not everybody's father. What does that have to do with John chapter 3? Well, think about this. We all have birthdays. We all are physically born under this physical planet. Or else you wouldn't be able to watch me or I wouldn't be able to sign to you right now or talk to you at this time. But God, being a spiritual being, knew that though our bodies are temporal, our spiritual part of us, our spiritual anatomy of us, is an eternal thing. And so God says, I'm more concerned about the spiritual issues. And that's why he sent his son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for you and me 2,000 years ago and live again three days later so that you and I can have a spiritual birthday and know for sure that heaven is our home. Well, that leads to the next question. Why do we need a spiritual birthday? Well, it's simple. We're all sinners. We've all broken God's law and God's commands. But God loves us so much so that he let Jesus Christ become the substitute for your sin and my sin. So that if we recognize and admit that we are sinners, we can then trust in Jesus Christ as our substitute. And more so than that, our personal Savior and know that on top of our physical birthdays, we have a spiritual birthday now in that God becomes our father, we become his sons, daughters, we become his children, and we know we're going to go to heaven someday. My friend, it's very simple. It's not about what the church says, what I have ideas about, or what you have ideas about. It's finding out what God says directly to you and me. And he did it right there in the Bible, and in particular, John chapter 3, when Jesus says, you must be born again. If our church can help you with that question, if you have any questions about that, we'll give you some answers. We'd be glad to help you in any way we can. Again, Pastor Randy, personally thanking you for watching the message. And again, if there's anything we can do for you, let us know. God bless and make it a great day.